May we never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the word of the cross is the power of God to us who have been saved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The intention for this morning's Holy Mass is for L.V. Tan, for L.V. Tan. Dear brothers and sisters, the church honors today uh, eight Jesuit martyrs who were uh, put to death by the uh, Huron and Iroquois uh, and Mohawk uh, Indians. The, the Huron, the Iroquois, and the Mohawk Indians in the region of uh, southern Ontario and um, the, the areas around Lake Huron in uh, North America. When Pope John Paul II made a visit to Canada many years ago, uh, he asked to go to the shrine for these martyrs who were put to death so gruesomely. And, uh, and, uh, and so uh, they... Um, uh, brought, brought him to the place, and he knelt there to pray. And um, so since then, since the Pope prayed there, many pilgrims go to that, that place where the martyrs were put to death. It's uh, north of Montreal, I mean, uh, north of Toronto in uh, southern um, t- uh, Ontario. But dear brothers and sisters, because the martyrs, and because the missionary martyrs were so powerful in their, uh, in their struggle and their uh, love of God and the love of the people that to whom they, uh, by whom they were martyred. Let us now call to mind our sins and let us ask God for mercy as we uh, start this Holy Mass. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who chose to manifest the blessed hope of your eternal kingdom by the toil of Saints John de Brebeuf and Isaac Jogues and their companions, and by the shedding of their blood, graciously grant that through their intercession the faith of Christians may be strengthened day by day. Grant this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly earlier. When you read this, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to human beings in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs members of the same body and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus 
through the gospel. Of this, I became a minister by the gift of God's grace that was granted me in accord with the exercise of his power. To me, the very least of all the holy ones, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the inscrutable riches of Christ and to bring light for all what is the plan of the mystery hidden from ages past in God who created all things so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the principalities and authorities in the heavens. This was according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in him. The word of the Lord. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my savior. I am competent and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. With joy, you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Acclaim his name. Among the nations, make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let us be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exaltation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. Stay awake, for you do not know when the Son of Man will come. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, who then is the faithful and prudent stu steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. <clears throat> Truly, I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. 
<clears throat> but if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the and he begins to beat the men servants and maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk then that servant's master will come at an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful that servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will shall be beaten severely and the servant who was ignorant of his master's will but acted in a way deserving of a se severe beating will be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. Dear brothers and sisters, the Holy Gospel of the Lord. So dear brothers and sisters, we're uh, on almost in the 30th week of ordinary time. Uh, we are only four, four weeks or so, uh, five weeks or so from the end of the liturgical year, which is Christ the King. So during the end of the liturgical year, um, which, is, which are these weeks in October and uh, early and November, we hear a lot of the stories uh, that refer to the coming of Christ when the final judgment will be. And um, so uh, uh, the Christians, when we are baptized, we receive the greatest gift anyone could ever imagine, the promise of everlasting life, the promise of being with God in eternity, the, the greatest joy that our soul can, uh, can, and can experience. And such a great treasure is so important, um, the opposite of what of, of, of that is hell and eternal um, punishment. So uh, we want what God wants for us. God has made us for his kingdom. So uh, Jesus tells this parable, which is a little bit complicated to follow, but it's about you know, a, uh, somebody entrusted with taking care of the, a household, and the household represents the, the church and represents the, the, king, the, the preaching that must be done to bring people to know how much God loves them and how much God has in store for those who love him and how God intends that all of us know these great joys of heaven. So uh, if that servant, however, um, in this parable, if he treats the people badly under his, under his um command the people who he's in charge of, if he treats them badly, then the, when the master of the house comes, he'll, he will punish him. So, uh, th so there, therefore, um, uh, Jesus is making a, a parable with an image of a household with a master and a bad servant and the punishment that goes to the bad servant uh, with God when he gives us such a great gift as eternal life and the, and, and the gift of the gospel. So the church honors today these eight martyrs who were martyred in uh, what is now Canada, in uh, southern Ontario, uh, during, between the years 1642 and 1649. And they were very brave French men. They were French. They were uh, the Jesuits. They uh, were young men, so anxious to spread the gospel to the the native peoples, the first nations of Canada, the, uh, the Mohawks, the Iroquois, and the, um, the Hurons. Um, you know that one of the Great Lakes is called Lake Huron. Have you learned about the Great Lakes yet and what the names are? Lake Superior, Lake Ontario, and Lake, um, um, Lake Michigan. I was near Lake Michigan last summer. That was really a pretty place. Well, anyway, so up in that area um, uh, was where the, these uh, brave, brave Jesuits were, um, uh, were, at first they experienced a, a lot of rejection from the, in, from the native peoples. And the native peoples were suspicious of them because uh, the French had come from France and had conquered that area. And so here were uh, eight Jesuit priests uh, who were French. And so the Indians felt that they were um, being invaded by, conquer by the conquering people from uh, the conquering foreigners. So uh, they treated them very badly. But the, the, these eight devoted Jesuit 
uh, missionaries. They, um, they endured and they put up with uh, horrible, horrible tortures. Some of them were killed in the year um, 1642. And then, uh, then there was a period where things were a little bit better. And during that period, some of those missionaries returned to France. And, um, and then they went back to Canada. They didn't want to stay in France where they would be safe. They wanted to go back to the indigenous peoples, the native peoples who were um, uh, sure to, to kill them, and they did. Um, and they were, they were uh, killed, and I'm not going to describe uh, the ways that they were killed, that some of the most um, uh, harrowing uh, stories of all of the, uh, the, the stories of the, in the histories of how uh, uh, martyrs were, were executed over the centuries, uh, but these were some of the most gruesome and, and, and horrible. And they happened in um, relatively modern times when, you know, just before uh, America became a new country. So this was a, um, uh, these were uh, very, very prominent in the minds of Catholics especially. So we honor uh, these great martyrs. They, they indeed were great, good stewards. They were the kind of people that um, Jesus is saying, um, uh, you know, that they've been given, they've been entrusted with much, and much is demanded of them, but they were so generous and brave that they uh, surrendered themselves, and they inspire us to also surrender ourselves to God, trusting in that his life for us is more great than any life uh, here on earth. So let us stand and let us pray. That the church, the witness to Christ, and all his, and, uh, may be united in courageously presenting to the world the good news of freedom from sin and death. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our Ho Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose Gomez, and for uh, all churches, and especially churches where there is persecution that forces them into silence, that their faith may realize that mustard seed, too, grows in silence. We pray to the Lord. And because these Jesuit martyrs, the missionaries, were tortured and dehumanized, we pray for those who suffer from violent power, the victims and, uh, victims and their oppressors, that the sword may swiftly be returned. We pray to the Lord. We pray that our own thoughts may turn to those who feel there is nothing worth living for or dying for, that they would see the example of the martyrs, that Christ gives us all that we, that we could possibly imagine and more. We, we pray to the Lord. For the intention for this morning's Holy Mass, for LV Tan, we pray to the Lord. And now let us pray in silence for all our private needs and for those we pray for. For these needs known to God alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, you are the source of all our hopes. We turn to you in times of trial and difficulty. We ask your blessing upon us that we may have the courage of the martyrs and the courage of those who proclaim your truth throughout all these centuries and in that the future may know and our present, our world may know that you are our Savior and our God who loves us forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, beloved brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we venerate the passion of your martyrs, John de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogues, and their companions, grant that through this sacrifice, O Lord, we may proclaim worthily the death of your only begotten Son, who, not content with encouraging the martyrs by word, strengthen them likewise by example, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks. To the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all the creatures of heaven and earth sing a song of adoration. We too join the hosts of angels as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our departed brothers and sisters and all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints and the martyrs, St. Isaac Jogues, St. John de Brebeuf and their companions, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us now turn to one another and let us share with love the sign of the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The act of spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, and be courageous and be strong. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by the example of blessed John de Brebeuf, Isaac, Jogues, and their companions, we may bear in our hearts the marks of your son's charity and suffering and ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The peace and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.